What's up, y'all? Peace. It's been a minute. <clears throat> Just wanted to do a video to talk about, you know what I'm saying? I knew mayor, well, yeah, new mayor Eric Adams, you know? So, to give you a little short history, you know what I'm saying? Eric Adams is, is sec the second African-American mayor of New York City. The first was David Dinkins. So, you know, Dinkins was, was mayor from 89 to 90, 92. And then Giuliani became mayor in 90, well, actually up to 93. Giuliani became mayor in 94. And, um, you know, Eric Adams is making these, he's doing, I don't doubt he, he, this, he cares about the city, right? But, He's trying to make these changes and well there, there's certain changes that he's not talking about, but you know, gentrification, but as far as what's going on on the on the on the subway system, crime and all that, you know, because you know, I you know going you know, it is basically anywhere in the tri state, it's not just New York City where you, you're gonna bump into some Man, I had some shit happen to me, but <clears throat> you know, there's there's dudes my age, women my age, they're still young but they're unhinged, right? Like they're yeah, they're bipolar. So they I mean I had one woman come up to me when I was about to get off in Jersey City, Journal Square, on the train, just I just looked up. She was yelling off and on the whole trip. I looked up and she's Fucking on my face, you know what I'm saying? And she's just yelling, she's just going crazy. So I had, I was gonna get up anyway, but I had to get up and you know posture and kind of back her off a little bit. But and and then it was another situation, stupid situation. I I just ignored them. A dude, dude around my age, maybe younger on the train, just just barking at me. And I'm about to get off anyway. I got on the first stop, about to get off the next stop. But anyway. It's like you can have as many cops as you want on the train, and they should be. Um, you know, we don't want to. I don't want to see nobody getting pushed on the tracks or nothing like that. But it, it's a it's a mental uh, it's a mental illness thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you're willing to deal with like mental illness and, and get these people. And I, I know he's. They have this thing now where. Something like they're gonna have people who have mental problems and gonna try to get them help off the street or off the subway. I think it's mainly on the subway. But you got dudes that that like the dude barking at me had the 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 yellow orange vest on or whatever. I guess he had some kind of city job. You got dudes that's that's working that's talking to themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like cursing at people and, and all that. So. It's it's gonna it's gonna you know. I mean, I could be conspiratorial about the whole shit. I could start saying well, maybe it's something in the vaccines that they gave us when we were babies. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe there's something on the food. I think it's a lot of things. You know, it's a lot of things. And, and, and then there's you know the housing projects and and being dilapidated from the inside, lead poisoning, which causes you know mental problems for kids and. You know, me personally, you know, I, I had minor forms of dyslexia, minor forms of, um, I believe I had like probably had issues with learning. I, I have, it wasn't that big, but I guess slurring your words and, and, um, slurring your words. And saying words the wrong way, I guess that's tied to dyslexia. But you can kind of say I had a minor speech impediment, whatever, whatever you call that. You know what I'm saying? Speech problem, or and just issues with concentrating on learning. Be it I'm a product of the public school system. You know what I'm saying? Like so, the kids is wild and it's hard to concentrate anyway. And I'm talking grade school. And my mother used to volunteer. 
in my school and some some of the some of the girls would talk back to you know one, all of them just I went to the school that before I was born it was predominantly a white school so looking at old pictures from the 70s 60s and 70s the kids weren't bused to that school until the 70s and it was lit gradual you know what I'm saying so a lot of the teachers that I had in that school, it was a progressive school, you know, from kindergarten to eighth grade, you know. A lot of those teachers were students in the sixties, so when they went, they were going to, when they were going to that school, there were there were no African American and Puerto Rican kids, you know, um, Mexican American kids, Asian kids. So, and there still wasn't too many Asian kids in my school. It was a few. So by the time I went there in 83, after my mother got married the second time, and we moved out of Williamsburg into Midwood, near Midwood, Brooklyn, border Bensonhurst line, you know. You know, by then it was different. It was like all kinds of kids in that school. So, but there, there was uh, kids acting up. Even the smart kids was acting up. But that I think that has more to do with arrogance, and, and of course they were mostly white. But even, even there were some white kids that weren't that smart that was wilding out, and um, so I, you know there's all kinds of reasons. But but you know, from for for me I, I wasn't wilding out. No, I couldn't I couldn't because my mother was strict. But and, and plus I was too skinny to be evil and wild and shit like that. Like I was the one I used to get picked on. I was the good kid from a mad city. Way before Kendrick Lamar, you know, and um, you know, I had my 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 you know issues, and I stuttered. You know, I had stuttering issues, saying words the wrong way, problems with concentrating. I was over medicated. That's that's one thing I remember when they were doing the brain. I used to go to Long Island College Hospital. That the hospital got closed down like four or five years ago. They used to do the brain scanning. To see what was wrong with me. <laughs> I felt like I was crazy. I felt like what the fuck they they putting all kinds of stuff in my head and I have to, I can't move. I have to close my eyes and I'm I'm seeing waves with my eyes closed, I'm seeing the waves going down. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's weird, you know what I'm saying? But they had to figure it out and anyway the doctor that mostly did the brain scanning, there, I think there was a, a white female doctor a few times, but it was mostly an Asian doctor, and he he told my mother to get to get me off all the medication because I was taking like eight different medications because I was always sick, and that and that was the other thing I had. I was always sick. I had asthma. Um. So. You know, I had all that. So you know. So there was there was reasons for why I wasn't learning, but I I you know I didn't have bipolar you know issues I didn't have schizophrenia. I mean maybe I was I don't know I used to be scared of the dark so whenever I go to sleep I used to cover myself like this I I don't know maybe that was the medication that was me making me scared and schizophrenic I would have like half wake half. I sleep nightmares where I'm kind of awake. I'm seeing the room, but then there's like fucking things flying around and shit. And I would just try to wake myself up. And I used to have nightmares. So I don't know if I believe that could have been from the medication. You know what I'm saying? Because I after that, I didn't have nightmares. I wasn't scared of the dark. And it was all kinds of other things going on at that time. And sometimes when you're afraid of something and you and you feel like something's going to happen... You start having nightmares, and then when that that nightmare happens for real, for real, then then you're seeing it, and then all of a sudden you don't have nightmares no more. That's my story. But I also believe being over medicated maybe have nightmares, or maybe have this almost almost schizophrenic thing where I'm scared of the dark, and I'm like this, and I'm you know what I'm saying, and I'm thinking something's gonna come out the door, even though my, my mother my, is, is in the next room, my stepfather, you know what I'm saying, and. Uh, the hallways right there, but I'm thinking something's gonna come out. Look, you know, so, but I was never a wild dude though. I was, I, you know, I was never a bully because I'm the one that used to get picked on. So, 
I, and, and a lot of it has to do with like raising the kids the right way. Like some of the kids that picked on me, they they had expensive sneakers, and, and they was from the projects, but they. They had eighty dollar sneakers, and I, and I remember one of them saying, "Oh, my grandmother bought me these sneakers." Like, like what the fuck is a grandmother doing buying her grandson eighty dollar sneakers if he's always getting in trouble? Like that, that's not gonna solve anything. You know what I'm saying? And then of course you have single mothers who, um, their kids do go the wrong way, and they know about it and they don't do anything about it. And, and, and I know from personal experience, I'm just saying that like some of these dudes is doing drill music, and I <laughs> like and their mother's like, yo, listen to this, and they're, not, they're on Facebook, but you know, it's like, but listen to what he's rapping about. He's like, you know, it's drill music. It's like you hear the beat, you know, bouncy beat, and he's like, picking in the whip, cooking in the whip. You know what I'm saying? Like on some pop smoke shit, and it's like, and then but then the same mother, same female who's around my age, she's saying, "Oh, my son is a good kid. He's quiet. He don't run." I'm like, "Who's rapping about fucking cooking the pot?" You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, but so a lot of of what you're saying is it, just single mothers not being able to control their sons and, and then their sons having mental issues because they can't control themselves, but there's different reasons for that, you know, and it's going to take a lot of work. And, and, you know, the reason why I'm speaking on this is because, you know, I ain't nobody famous, but I, I still live in the hood. So I'm seeing like the, the, deal, the dealing, the street shit, you know, the trap music, the drill music, I'm here. Like, when I moved back to Brooklyn a couple of years ago, I was out in the Ocean Hill. Ocean Hill is different. It's not it's not hood, but it's mostly black and brown, but it's not hood. And um, because not all black neighborhoods are ghetto, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, Brownsville's right there, East York right there, everybody's pet driving by and you know, you're hearing the drill music, you know. Drill music is, is pretty big in Brooklyn, in certain parts of Brooklyn. And I'm saying like, you know, I'm saying that the effects of it, you know, like there's always going to be violence. There was violence before gangster rap. There's going to be violence after because gangster rap is just a reflection of what's been going on for a long time before I was born. So before any of us was born. So, I mean, you could, you could look at some of the 70 black movies from the 70s. That's a reflection they're, they're showing what's, what was already going on prior to the 70s, which was in the 60s. So dudes was already hustling. Dudes was, was already pimps. All that shit was already going on. Even, you know, during the Civil Rights Movement, all that stuff was already going on. So, but, you know, there, there's different reasons for why, and, and one of it is poverty. So when you talk about poverty, you're talking about gentrification, right? Eric Adams is not has not said anything since he became mayor about gentrification, you know? Like forcing somebody who's been living there for decades, forcing a whole bunch of people who lived in the same neighborhood for decades, who, who know each other's family. The reason why that neighborhood is so quiet is because everyone knows each other. If one kid gets in trouble, everybody knows about it. And so the whole block is going to make sure Nobody from the outside comes in. You know what I'm saying? But once you force those people to move out and then you build condos and then you're bringing a whole bunch of out of town, there's not that neighborhood. There's nobody watching that neighborhood because, okay, you have people who may, who can afford now to, to live in these con expensive condos, but they're going to be moving out because it's, it's, they realize, man, it's even middle upper middle class people can't afford it. They jack the price more. You know, so now these condos in the same neighborhood where, you know, people of color used to live, African Americans, Puerto Ricans used to live, it's condos there, but these condos are half empty because everybody keeps moving out. So there's no community there now. So now a homeless person or a 
bipolar person or some fucked up dude that just came out of jail can go in that neighborhood and rape somebody and nobody's gonna know about it. Because that, that's that's why gentrification is so wrong on so many levels. These develop most of these developers are not from New York, they're not even from the country. Right? I'm surprised people are just accepting this. I'm just surprised nobody's out there taking to the street. I'm not I'm not saying people should riot, but shit, I'm fucking angry and, and as angry as I am, that's how angry everyone else should be. They should be taken to the streets. How are you going to let a rich person from China or from some country we we never heard before come in here and force everybody out and build condos? And, and you know what I'm saying? It Destroying our communities. Destroying communities. Any it, it could be any community. But any community where everyone has been living there for decades, that's that's gonna be a safe space because everyone knows knows each other. So Eric Adams hasn't addressed that. My question is why? Why haven't you addressed gentrification? We all know why. Because I did a video about it when I was in Williamsburg walking around. You know, I, I did a video about it, I think it was last year, the year before. Okay, you get you you, you get money from from this development. Half of that money goes into the city. There's other ways to get that money. There's other ways to get that bag. It's, it's you know, people need to. People don't want to say anything bad about Eric Adams or about Obama because they're black. It don't matter, black or white. These are Democrats and Republicans, right? Republicans and Democrats are run by people who are not from our community. So you're gonna have a biracial president or an African-American mayor, it's not going to change anything unless we force the mayor to, to make those changes. If he doesn't, we take to the streets. We have to do what... I've said this before. Just, let's do what Martin Luther King did. Let's let's do it that way. Let's address the situation. Let's see if, that, if they're going to... Once they do address it, let's see what they're going to do. Plan it out. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. If... If the plan doesn't go into rotation, then you, then you take it to the street and you protest. You know, that's what Martin Luther King was doing throughout that whole time on, on any subject matter. Sanitation, workers, whatever. That's what has to be done. We can't just accept what a politician is going to give us because that's being lazy. You know what I'm saying? And me personally, I take the stand. I, I don't vote Democrat, Republican anymore. I, I vote third party. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the... Re I voted third party. My, my second time voting, I, I voted for Ralph Nader. That was the 2000 election. Democrat, liberals, Democrats were blaming me, people like me, for voting for Ralph Nader. Nah, they, Al Gore won. He, they stole the election. Al Gore won. That point blank period. They're not going to say that, though, because... You know, it, it they don't want to admit that elections in the U.S. can be rigged because we're always talking about how elections in other countries are rigged. Elections here are rigged too. So, but I did the right thing. I took a stand, and I was still a registered Democrat. Switch. I I became an independent when Obama ran because I I didn't see any I didn't see anything that was going to change. And so he, you know, Obama was a community activist, in Chicago, whatever that means, in Chicago. How did he change anything in Chicago? The violence, the poverty, and the gentrification that's going on in downtown Chicago. That money that they made from all them tall buildings, all those new tall buildings being built in downtown Chicago, did that affect? That that help bring money into the south south side of Chicago and the black communities there or on the west side of Chicago, where the housing projects used to be now you know, none, nah. you know what I'm saying like there's there's never a plan B or a C and I'm not from Chicago but I'm just using an example because here in New York City we you know we have the same kind of violence not on that scale but it's up there. You know, but I don't see Eric Allen's addressing gentrification or the high rents, the landlords, you know, 
He's, he he made a, a speech. I haven't watched it full about affordable housing. I only see affordable housing being built in the Bronx. I don't see it being built anywhere else. Staten Island, Brooklyn, where I'm from, Queens, Manhattan. I don't see any of that. So it's all talk. And the Bronx is, is <laughs> right now, like, the most lit borough right now when it comes to fucking violence. So, that's not going to stop the violence in the Bronx. That's just going to make poor people not want to move into the, the, the new affordable buildings that you're building over there in the Bronx. You know, so, you know, I, so that's that's just my crow. This, you know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking out loud. This is what I do. I think out loud. You know, but I'm thinking with not knowledge of you know, being born and raised in New York City, seeing the cycle of poverty and violence and homelessness and, you know, people, when they end up in the shelter system, just getting, doing what Giuliani did and just giving them a city job, that's not going to pay much. It's not going to lift them out. It's not going to get them out the shelter system. It's not going to lift them out of poverty. You know, there's a slight possibility they, they, they'll find a, an apartment and housing projects. They, they don't have no say in which housing projects they're gonna go to. They're just gonna they're gonna pick the first one. It might be the worst one. So it's like if you if you live in one of the worst housing projects, that's like living in the prison, right? So living in the shelter system is like a prison because you're you're dealing with you meet you, there may be one person that's normal. But then he's looking around and there's people talking to themselves, there's people with mental illness, people with alcoholic issues, people that have, that were addicted to drugs, all in the same shelter system. So you're going from one crazy situation to another. That's not going to get a person situated and move up and have the, how you say, mental health to cope. Because when you live around violence, you're going to become negative yourself. So Giuliani never addressed the issue. He just made it. I don't know what the... he Giuliani did what he did. That's all he did. He just moved people around. So with Eric Adams, I'm hoping that there's got to be some kind of change. And, you know, right now... It's just crazy right now, you know. Taking the train, you're seeing homeless people everywhere. Dudes just sitting there with cell phone. They have a cell phone. They're charging it because they have chargers now in the subway station. And you're just there. The same dude every night. He's just sitting there charging his phone. I don't know. If he's obviously homeless. I, I'm seeing dudes walking around, talking to themselves. I, you see it in my job because the, there's a, shelter, a new shelter uh, near where I work at, they come into the store, they talking to themselves, they sit down, they talking to themselves. That's just putting them in a shelter system and having them buy food and walk, move around. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Like those kinds of people shouldn't be walking around. Those are the kinds of people that, that can snap and suck a punch a woman. You know what I'm saying? So having a new shelter system doesn't do it either. And that's why I understand those people in Queens, why they were so mad that a, sh a new shelter was going to be built. And they, I don't blame them because who are you going to have in that shelter system besides homeless families and single people that have fallen to hard times or at the moment are in the shelter system because their apartment got burned down. But you're also going to have Dudes talking to themselves, walking around, you know, cursing and just acting weird. And, and that creates an atmosphere. So I don't blame them, you know, because I'm seeing it in Long Island City. I'm seeing it. You, you just can't put people in the shelter system and not get them help. Or if, if, if it's a person that had alcohol issues or had gambling issues, and how is he getting help? You see what I'm saying? So, 
it, it, I just feel like they're just shooting, calling everything, sweeping everything under the rug, and not dealing with mental illness, not dealing with um, how single mothers, I, I didn't raising their kids, or whether or not some of those kids may have mental illness, and maybe she doesn't know about it. Women ending up with the wrong fathers, you know what I'm saying, or potential fathers, you know. A lot of women end up with these guys that are abusive to them, a lot of females end up with guys that are gang members like and a lot of these gang members are not low there either so this you know all all that has to be addressed you know what i'm saying and um i know it's early in it for eric adams but those issues have to be addressed and um i i don't see i don't see it being addressed i don't see anything changing when the next mayor election comes um, we need like a like an independent person to become mayor of New York City. Really, if you think about it, and um, and then maybe one day that independent person we can support him and vote him into governorship of New York. He did it in Minnesota with Jesse Ventura, and he won twice as mayor of of the city. I forgot what city it was, and um, of the state he became governor twice. Because he really cared about the people, and he and he had a progressive mind, and he was anti-war. So he's going. He was going to make sure that all the money that went into the state and to the city that he was mayor man was going to go into what needed to be going into. Because a lot of times mayors make these deals, and it is for future purposes for them to run for president one day or governor one day, or um, or some of these mayors. Used to be in the White House, and now they they're, they're running from like Giuliani. So yeah, so you know, there has been, there's a lot of things that have to be addressed. So I I think I said enough. Um, I think I'll make this short. I'm still planning on doing the bitch shoot thing. I just need to find if there's a bitch shoot app because I. I'm, more, more than likely, I'm gonna do most of my videos there. So, so this is just something um, I might put up. I'm gonna probably put up on YouTube. But this is something I had. I feel like I had to say because it was on my chest, and um, you know, there's there's a lot of videos I could do about some of the things I mentioned separately. Like that's, I know I mentioned things I could do a whole video on, but. I just want to keep this simple and, um, you know, I'm tired of people using the excuse, oh no, I'm going to vote Democrat. Then you're, then you're a slave. You're a mental slave. You're a mental slave. You know, slavery's over, but you're a mental slave, right? You are. Because then you're not willing to change. You're not willing to see that at a lower level, both parties bought off all politicians at a local level are bought off by both parties. You know, it's no different. So, unless people, most people are willing to see that. And, you know, I know the algorithms are weird. And I know a lot of pro-Republicans and pro-Democrats get more algorithms than somebody like me. But there are lots of alternative news channels in YouTube. Like the Real News Network out of Baltimore, um, the Gray Zone, um, the Empire Files. Those are good YouTube channels to understand why you need to vote third party. You know what I'm saying? Or for an independent candidate. Because we're losing. We're losing. Okay, my, my old na neighborhood in Williamsburg is gone. It's all Hasidic now, mostly. Yeah, except for the school is still there and the Army base. I mean, it's pretty much all I said. We lost. Okay, we 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 lost East Williamsburg. Most of East Williamsburg is gone. We lost it. Okay, we lost. Best Eye is 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 half gone. You know, it is. I'm from East Williamsburg. Is right by Best Eye. I'm right there. I used to be right there. It's gone. Half of Best Eye is gone. Now my. <laughs> I'm I'm curious I'm curious to know where did all the people who used to live in East Windsor and Best Eye where did they go I know 
I have relatives that moved to Florida. Don't know why, but they moved to Florida. Maybe it's cheaper down there. Weather's nicer. More hurricanes, more alligators down there. I wouldn't want to go down there. It's me personally. But we're losing. We're already lost. We lost. We're losing. Okay, we lost East Williamsburg. We lost half of Best Stop. Okay, we're losing. Because we keep voting for the Blasio. We keep voting for Democrats. Oh, a lot of us do vote Republican, right? We voted Mayor Bloomberg three times. He wasn't supposed to run three times. We voted him three times. He ran as a Republican first. Then he ran as a Democrat. Then he ran as an Independent because he's a billionaire. That shows that rich people control both parties. Or they're all from the same circle. They just have disagreements about how to, how to apply their rules. But... We voted for Bloomberg three times. We killed ourselves. That was it. We lost. We lost that. We lost. We're losing our communities. We we lo- we losing our community. We can't. I don't want to hear nobody say, "Oh, I'm repping Brooklyn." Okay, rep. I, I don't even say rep Brooklyn no more. I don't. Because I don't, I never had the manpower to de- to defend Brooklyn. But you say you keep saying Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. What part of Brooklyn? You're talking about the neighborhood that you don't live in anymore. That that is completely gone. That that you know what I'm saying. The only thing, the only communities we have left is the housing projects, and that's where we, we can make changes. The um, Marcy projects is up and down. The last time I. I was there, there was dudes just hanging out there. And when you see a bunch of dudes my age and younger hanging out there, what are they doing there? They just they're standing up, they're standing, leaning, they're going like this, they're just standing there separately, they're hustling. Out of everything that Jay Z did, Everything that Jazzo did, whatever they did for the housing projects, the co drive. I remember when Jay Z and Beyonce did the co drive in, in the Marcy project. The line was like from one block to the other. None of that changed. Some of the shootings that continue to take place in Marcy. It was just, you know, Dre tried to do a music video over there. He almost got kind of ran out. Like, Jay Z did what he had to do. Okay, he he did. He did what he had to do. He had to clean up the, make the basketball courts better, make the, the fencing better, the benches, the park benches better in more in Marcy. He did that. Um, I'm pretty sure Jazzo may have put money into certain things in Marcy as well. But Jay Z has more money. He did what he had to do, but he didn't do more, and he should have done more. And he should have done. What he did for Marcy for the whole area. Because the whole area is gentrified. Outside Marcy, right outside Marcy, except for one block or the other blocks, are either controlled by Hasidic people or are controlled by developers, condos. Right right across the street from the Marcy project. And yet you still see dudes hanging out on the other side drinking, smoking. Like the mentality, that gangs that street mentality is still there. So Jay Z didn't do more for Marcy and he didn't do what he did for Marcy. For the rest of the neighborhood. So it, it's just everybody's boxed in now, Marcy, and the mentality hasn't changed. There's good people in Marcy, a lot of great older people. Um, I, I shot my own little music video, half of my music video in, in Marcy. Um, one more well, respect when older woman came by, she was like, Oh, you shoot music? Good, good. You know, and there was a police van behind us. I don't know if he was watching us. Then we went around. The, a video in one of the small streets near between Marcy and where I used to live there's like a little industrial street the, the Jews are buying that too they, they, they're trying to rent that on to condos I mean Jewish not not con- Jewish let's, let's call it what it is Jewish settlements they're Jewish settlements okay by the way I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube takes this video down so I'm just this is why I'm trying to do the bitch thing. thing um we shot a video there and there was a, a security van <laughs> right behind us. The police van and the security van made gave us more lights for the music video. You know what I'm saying? So but so there's good people in Marcy, but 
the cycle of, of you know what I'm saying, hustling and, and violence is just gonna keep going unless you do more. And, and it has to deal with people in the most, you know, which are also, um, you know, when Drake did the video in, in Marcy, um, I think it was a few days before that, that that's when um, that girl got gang raped in one of the empty apartments in Marcy. So, you know, Drake never addressed it. I think I did a video about this before, but Drake never addressed the issue. Um, he didn't say anything. He didn't go to the community center there. Like, if you're gonna go there and shoot a video there and you're not from there, you, you, and you got money. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, I think Drake didn't really, Drake probably thought that, oh, I'm gonna shoot a video more, see how I respect for hip hop. Cause Jay Z did a lot for Marcy. He, he's thinking maybe Jay Z did a lot for Marcy. He didn't realize Jay Z only did what he had to do for Marcy. He had to do a lot, cause the mentality is still there. So he realized Marcy is still kind of ghetto. It's still, it's still lit. So, because, because everything is so expensive now. The people in the most projects are boxed in, they still are trying to get there. You know what I'm saying? Because every time you get more money, everything else just goes up more. And then, you know, you got the, the, the next generation and these younger kids who have been raised by single mothers and they don't know what their kids are doing and, and all that. So, Drake should have put some money into the multi projects. And, and maybe the tenement building right across the street from, there's a tenement building right across the street from the Marcy Projects. That's real old, there's a, there's a deli right below that. It looks real old, it looks like it's falling apart. People in that building could use help too. Um, That building needs to be fixed. Um, Obviously, I guess the landlord doesn't want to fix it because he's trying to sell it to the Jewish people. See, those things sh should have been done by Jay-Z, but Drake could have done that, looked at that building and said, you know what, that building looks like Across the street from the Marcy Project, that building looks like it needs to be fixed. Let me, let me talk to the people that, if Drake is a, is a nice guy, then be a nice guy. You talk to the people. You know, because Drake is an is intelligent person. You know what I'm saying? Like, Drake never hustled like Jay-Z did. So Drake is even more articulate than, than Jay is about how to talk to people. But he never did that. So, you got Jay-Z. And Jay-Z is... Showing up his shit off. Drake is, is doing music that people got. There were, there were some Drake fans that I'm pretty sure. Because in the beginning, I think it was all good. There were some people that Drake, Drake. Because Drake does have an influence in music. A lot of people, a lot, a lot of females love his Drake music. But I remember seeing the video and Drake had to go in the limousine because dudes was, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I know there were some people that really, really didn't want Drake to be there. So, and I, I, I understand why, because on top of Jay-Z really not doing everything, really not addressing the issue of violence and, you know, the kids and single mothers, on top of that, Drake is, go, is gonna go down there and shoot a video, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? So, it, there, there's, you know, it's a lot of things that have to be fixed. And I don't think Eric Adams is gonna address all that because he's in the pocket of the developers. Now, there was a meeting in Columbus Circle a few weeks ago um, on a Saturday. Eric Adams hosted that meeting. It was inside one of the fancy, smancy places, spaces up there in the buildings there in Central Park. And he hosted the owner of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Fink, I think his name is, the owner of BlackRock, who was under investigation for all kinds of schemes. Um, the owner of TikTok, probably from China. <laughs> the owner of Instagram, I don't know who the owner of Instagram is. I believe Jeff Jeff Bezos was there, I think. Um, Jennifer Lopez's uh, on again, off again husband, Ben Affleck was there. Um, there were some other people that were there. Oh, yeah, the president, the corrupt president of Ukraine. Okay, Zelensky was in that meeting. That's what our current mayor 
Eric Adams is doing. He's hosting meetings with rich people who are censoring me. My, my last video got taken down. So he, he's hosting people that are censoring me for telling the truth. Yeah, like, so now I'm thinking whose side are you really on? And like as I said, they might take this video down because of some things I mentioned here and there. But see, that's what I'm saying. What's Eric Adams doing? Hosting, you're not going to the Marcy Project to talk to the people in Marcy and talking to the people across the street from Marcy in that tenement building. But you're hosting one of the most corrupt Ukrainian leaders that is a product of US involvement in Ukraine. We overthrew the the old Ukrainian government that was pro-Russian and we replaced it with a pro-US program Pro uh, pro US Ukrainian government that was run by right wing people, and these right wing people are Nazis. They're fucking Nazis. The, 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 the head of special forces in Ukraine is a Nazi of a Nazi group. So, you're, you're, you're going to talk to him, talk to Mark Zuckerberg, who is censoring people for, for freedom of speech, other uh, heads of social media who are censoring people. Um, I don't know if Elon Musk was at that meeting. I don't. I'm not sure because Elon Musk is trying to reestablish more freedom on Twitter, but he might have been in that meeting too. Um, I just don't know why Eric Adams is hosting that meeting. Why? What does that have to do with New York City? What does that have to do with? Unless you support censoring people, you know. Uh, Eric Adams is, pro, is supporting people getting vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccines over, 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 over again. Uh, so maybe that's what it is. It's political. Maybe he's pr- trying to put himself in standing with the Democratic Party, which he shouldn't do. He shouldn't have that many. He should be in the Marcy Projects talking to the people. But well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he was in the Marcy Projects recently. I don't know. But I, I don't think he would. He since he became mayor, he's actually gone into the Marcy Project and talked to the people, or gone into East Winsburg and talked to the people that are being forced to move out by Jewish people. Or uh, and because he, he's not gonna rock the boat, he's not gonna say, "Oh yeah, there seems to be um, this movement within the, within the Hasidic community that's racist that, that are trying to move African American and Puerto, Be- Puerto Rican people and elderly people out." So they can move more Jewish people in. He's not going to say that. Because then they'll, they'll label me anti-Semitic. But that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Because the Hasidic community in Williamsburg are, are, are right-wing, very conservative. They don't, you know, they don't. They're, they're sad more. But they're very conservative. They, they all voted for Jimmy Rally. So. Um, Eric Adams is not going to do that. Because he's not going to rock the boat. And that's the problem. And I think that's a problem with New York City and the communities in New York City and the community of color, you know? And um, I just don't see Eric Adams really making any of the changes. This is my perspective, this is my opinion, but it's with some facts, because I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm from Brooklyn, I've seen it. Um, I haven't been, I haven't been near the Marcy Projects in a while, in a, in a year, um, because I'm out here in Jersey City nowadays, I'm trying to move back to Brooklyn. It's not easy. I got turned down for an apartment, one bedroom apartment. Um, you know, so I, I, me personally, I think Eric Adams is posturing. I don't think there's any going to be any changes, and I think it's going to get worse. The, the more gentrification continues, the more people are going to be poor and poor and poor, and it's going to create children to come up more. Aggressive, and they're just gonna create the cycle of violence, you know. So, my message to Eric Adams I don't, I don't hate Eric Adams. I've seen him in City Hall making a little press. I was passing by, he was making a press conference in there. I don't, I don't hate him because I know his background. He was a police officer, he, you know, second like African American mayor. But, um, I, I really hope that he addresses gentrification specifically and addresses 
the changing of Myrtle Avenue and how these changes destroy small businesses and how the conservatives that march for city communities are forcing people in Williamsburg and Best out of, to move out. He has to address that. He has to call it whether it is Jewish settlements or Jewish divisions, whatever you call it. Same ones that you see where they're they're burning Jewish, they're, they're forcing Palestinians to move out and they're building these Jewish divisions, right? Jewish settlements on top of the, what used to be Palestinian units or on top of Palestinian shops. That's what they're doing in Brooklyn. You, you have to address it head on regardless of whether Chuck Schumer or Don Heiden likes it. Fuck Chuck Schumer and, and Don uh, Heiden. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I said his last name out the right way. I don't care. You know, Chuck Schumer and Don are, are pro-Israel 100%. They're always going to defend the Jewish community. Fuck them. They don't care about us. You know? You know, um, Curtis Slee were from the Guardian Angels and Chuck Schumer, they, 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 they went to, they came down to Williamsburg. I believe in 2008, and um, I was there for the Green King, for the Three Kings Parade, and um, in Graham Avenue here in the Williamsburg West Side border, and he they never addressed Williamsburg at all. Cause the sleep was like, oh, I love Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans, it's an American pride. They've been here forever. I think Chuck Schumer comes. With, you, I love. You try to speak Spanish and all that. He said you love your peoples and whatever he was saying. It's BS. Curtis, I don't know where Curtis Lee stands in unification, and I don't care because I know he's tied to Giuliani, and Giuliani is kind of opened the door for gentrification to take place in New York. Chuck Schumer, obviously, he supports that shit, so, so, anyway, I don't think Eric Adams is really going to make the changes. I think he's posturing. I'm hoping Eric Adams talks to the community directly. And, and and listen to us and, and, and maybe watch this little video and address why we have issues with the Hasidic community because we do it's because they're trying to move us out they're trying to move us out so that's all I gotta say I'm gonna keep it, keep it real. so peace y'all and don't be surprised if they take down this video because I'm not surprised. But hopefully I'm going to put this on YouTube. And I'm going to try to. Try to create my bitch, my bitch shoot channel. And um, peace.